Buried in the Pyrenees is a mystery Europe still can't explain. A people whose bloodlines look older than history, whose language belongs to no family on earth. Everyone else was changed by conquest, but not them. Who are the Basques? And why does their DNA defy time itself? The Basques are not just another European community. They are an anomaly carved into the mountains. Their language, Uskara, has no known relatives. Their DNA shows patterns that scientists struggle to classify, and their survival story stretches back through Ice Age caves, Neolithic farms, and the clash of empires. Most populations in Europe carry layer upon layer of migrations. Celts, Romans, Moors, Indo-Europeans. But the Basques look different, almost as if history itself skipped their valleys. New research, however, reveals the truth is stranger than legend. They did mix with outsiders, but in a way that left them uniquely preserved, a genetic and cultural time capsule. If you believe these forgotten roots of human identity deserve to be uncovered, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Stone and Bone. Because the deeper we dig into Europe's past, the more it rewrites the story of us all. Twenty thousand years ago, Europe was a frozen wasteland. Glaciers buried the north, and most of the continent became uninhabitable. Human groups vanished, scattered, or retreated. But in the shadow of the Pyrenees, something different happened. The Franco-Cantabrian region, stretching across northern Spain and southwestern France, became a sanctuary. Here, people survived when almost everyone else did not. Caves like Santimamine, Ekine, and Altamira became shelters and canvases. On their walls, bison, horses, and deer were painted with such precision that they still take our breath away 30,000 years later. These weren't just decorations. They were signs of endurance symbols of communities that refused to disappear, and the story stretches even deeper. Neanderthals once hunted these valleys. At Lezetsiki Cave, stone tools date back more than 150,000 years. When modern humans arrived around 41,000 BC, they didn't instantly replace them. They overlapped for millennia. That encounter left traces still carried in our blood, about two to 3% of Neanderthal DNA, preserved in Basques as in all Europeans. The Pyrenees, rugged and resource-rich, acted as a genetic reservoir. While populations elsewhere collapsed, the ancestors of the Basques endured. This wasn't just survival. It was the foundation of a legacy that would outlast glaciers, conquerors, and even entire civilizations. As the Ice Age ended and Europe thawed, a new revolution swept across the land, farming. Around 6,000 BC, pioneers from Anatolia carried wheat, barley, sheep, and goats into Iberia. Across most of Europe, these Neolithic farmers transformed the population. Hunter-gatherer DNA was swallowed almost entirely, replaced by the genetics of newcomers. But the Basque homeland resisted that script. In caves like El Portolón near Atapurca, Archaeologists uncovered skeletons dating back 5,000 years. When scientists sequenced their DNA, they found something astonishing. Unlike Central and Northern Europe, where farmers nearly erased older lineages, the Basques held on to both. Roughly 30 to 35 percent of their ancestry came from Western hunter-gatherers, while 65 to 70 percent traced back to early Anatolian farmers. That unusual balance became their genetic fingerprint. While other Europeans blended, the Basques froze in place. Generation after generation, the mix endured. Even today, modern Basques carry this same dual heritage, far closer to those Neolithic villagers than to their Spanish or French neighbors. This wasn't isolation yet. It was insulation. They absorbed just enough to survive the agricultural wave, but not enough to lose themselves. And as history would show, this was only the first time the Pyrenees shielded them from Europe's greatest upheavals. Around 2500 BC, a new force surged across Europe. 
Steppe herders from the Pontic Caspian Plains arrived with wagons, horses, and bronze weapons. Archaeology shows their impact was overwhelming. Entire male bloodlines in places like Britain and Germany vanished, replaced by newcomers within a few centuries. But in the Basque Valleys, that tide broke. When researchers tested Bronze Age and Iron Age remains, they found something striking. Almost no trace of steppe ancestry. Where neighbors absorbed Indo-European genes and languages, the Basques stood apart. One lineage in particular tells the story. Roughly 70 to 75% of Basque men today carry the Y chromosome haplogroup R1BDF27. Geneticists believe it spread from a small founding group over 4,000 years ago, then froze in place. While the rest of Europe shifted again and again, Basque paternal lines stayed astonishingly stable. Think about that. While empires rose and fell, while languages spread and vanished, the Basque male lineage barely budged. It's as if their DNA pressed pause, leaving a living snapshot of what Europe looked like before the Indo-European storm. If their DNA was a time capsule, their tongue was the lock that sealed it. Euskara, the Basque language, stands alone, Europe's last survivor from before the Indo-European wave. It doesn't resemble Spanish, French, or even distant languages like Greek or Sanskrit. Linguists have compared it to Georgian, Berber, even Sumerian, but no match has ever held. This linguistic isolation wasn't just a curiosity, it was a shield. A 2021 study in Current Biology revealed that Basque dialect boundaries map almost perfectly onto genetic clusters in local villages. In other words, people didn't just marry nearby, they married within their dialect. The language itself reinforced population structure, creating a feedback loop where culture preserved genes, and genes preserved culture. By the 1970s, Oscara seemed close to collapse, spoken by only about 25% of Basques. Yet today, thanks to education and revival programs, that number has climbed back to over 30%. Roughly 750,000 people now speak Euskara, keeping alive a tongue that once faced extinction. Language became their firewall. While Latin replaced tongues from Gaul to Portugal, Euskara clung on. While Arabic reshaped much of Spain, Basque valleys resisted. Even during the 20th century, when the language was banned in schools, families whispered it in kitchens and passed it to their children. Against all odds, it endured. Do you think a language can protect a people's identity as much as walls or armies? Drop your thoughts below. I'd love to hear what you believe. For most of Europe, empire meant transformation. When Rome conquered Iberia, Latin replaced the tongues of Gaul, Lusitania, and much of Spain. Yet, in the Pyrenees, the Basque language and identity held firm. Centuries later, when Moorish armies swept into the peninsula in 711 AD, their influence reshaped Spain, genetically, linguistically, and culturally. But the Basque valleys resisted again. Genetic studies show only trace amounts of North African ancestry in their DNA. The Pyrenees weren't just mountains, they were walls against assimilation. Even in the modern era, when centralized Spanish power tried to stamp out Basque identity, most brutally under Francisco Franco, who banned Euskara from schools, the language and culture survived underground. Parents whispered it to their children, songs carried it through the mountains, and identity endured despite the threat of erasure. Compare this resilience with Celtic languages like Gaulish in France or Cornish in England, both smothered by empire. The Basques broke the pattern. Conquest came, but it could not conquer them. Survival wasn't just written in DNA or language. It was echoed in myth. In Basque legend, the mountains are alive with beings older than Christianity. At the heart of their pantheon is Mari, the mountain goddess. She punishes lies, 
rewards honesty, and controls the weather. She isn't a distant deity. She's said to appear in caves or streak across the sky as fire. Beside her is Shugar, often imagined as a serpent or dragon, symbolizing storms and male energy. Together they embody balance, permanence, and change. Then there are the Gentilique, giants who, according to legend, built the dolmens that still dot Basque hillsides. Archaeology confirms these monuments really were constructed in the Neolithic and Bronze Ages, grounding myth and history. When Christianity spread, the stories say the Gentilique hurled rocks across the valleys and vanished into caves, retreating into legend. Other figures filled their folklore. Lamiak, river nymphs with bird-like feet, Sorginak, witches who held night rituals in the mountains. These tales weren't just entertainment. They tethered the Basques to their land, caves, rivers, and skies, creating an unbroken cultural memory. Today, scientists talk about the Basques as a time capsule of Europe's past. Yet, long before genome sequencing, Basque myths told the same story of permanence, resilience, and an identity rooted so deeply it outlasted empires. Do you think myths carry truths science hasn't discovered yet? Are legends just stories? Or could they be history in disguise? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'll be checking them out. For decades, scholars assumed the Basques were a frozen relic, direct descendants of Europe's Ice Age hunters. But the picture is more complex. Modern studies from Nature Ecology and Evolution, 2019, to Science Advances, 2023, show that Basques are closest to Iron Age Iberians, not untouched hunter-gatherers. They absorbed farming ancestry from the Near East, and they share about 70% of their genome with modern Spaniards and French. Still, the differences matter. Most Europeans carry strong traces of Indo-European steppe ancestry from 2,500 BC migrations. The Basques? Only faint signals. Their genetic makeup didn't escape change entirely, but it resisted better than almost anyone else. And it's not just Y chromosomes. Maternal lineages tell the same story. Haplogroups like H1 and U5, stretching back to Ice Age Europe, remain unusually common among Basque women. It's rare to see both male and female lines showing such continuity. So, are the Basques Ice Age survivors, Neolithic farmers, or something in between? The answer may be all of the above. A mosaic of survival, insulation, and selective absorption. Enough change to endure, but not enough to erase their past. Today, about 3 million people live in the Basque Autonomous Community. Their cities, Bilbao, San Sebastian, Vitoria, are modern and global. Yet the culture woven through them feels ancient. Euskara schools thrive, traditional festivals like Asti Nagusha draw crowds, and Basque rural sports, lifting stones, cutting logs, echo mountain survival. Even in science, Basque DNA carries lessons. Certain conditions, like Huntington's disease, are unusually common in Basque regions, allowing researchers to study genetic disorders. At the same time, their genetic stability makes them invaluable for testing theories of migration and ancestry across Europe. But maybe the greatest lesson isn't medical or archeological, it's cultural. In a world where languages vanish every two weeks, the Basques show survival is possible. Identity can endure, not by shutting out the world completely, but by protecting what matters most, language, land, and community. They are not relics locked in amber. They are bridges between Ice Age hunters and modern Europeans, between myth and science, between survival and renewal. The Basques are not simply an isolated mountain people. They are a living puzzle, part Ice Age hunter, part Neolithic farmer, and yet set apart by what they resisted. Their DNA reads like Europe before the great reshaping migrations. Their language whispers from a time when no one spoke Spanish, French, 
or Latin. And their myths remind us that survival isn't always written in armies, but in memory. Everywhere else in Europe, identity was layered, erased, rewritten. But in the Basque Valleys, time slowed. The question is, why? Were they protected by mountains? By their language? By sheer chance? Or is there something deeper here? An untold chapter of human history still waiting in their genes? Tell us in the comments. Do you think the Basques are Europe's last link to prehistory? Or are they simply masters of cultural survival? If this journey through the forgotten roots of Europe has left you questioning what you thought you knew about history, make sure to like this video, share it with someone who loves hidden stories, and subscribe to Stone and Bone. Because every layer of DNA, every shard of myth, and every lost word of language brings us closer to uncovering who we really are.